Okay, this is my Retro Challenge 2017-04 entry. So I'll first start by showing what I did for the previous Retro Challenge. And that device is just here. So basically I have a uh, FPGA board in here. And then I have uh, another board on top of it, which has the TMS99105 16-bit CPU. And in that project, uh, the bottom part, the FPGA, implements the DI994A logic, except for the CPU. The CPU is here, right on the chip. So, to show, I'll just run a simple demonstration program I wrote. So, I will basically first initialize the FPGA chip. So, that's now loaded, and then I will load up my simple demo program, and you will see the output here on the screen. Okay, so now it's loading and doing some checksums and then it's going into a kind of a some sort of a benchmark and you can see a delay encounter here. Basically it's just doing horizontal scrolling by copying data to the video memory really quickly. And now that the countdown became zero, it basically means that it's running at full speed. And then, um, so that, that's basically what I implemented for the previous retro challenge, but for this year I was trying to do it on time, but I couldn't really do it. So what I did now is that let me just disconnect here and uh, unplug the sort of the CPU shield that I created. And what we are left with is the bare bones uh, FPGA board. And uh, okay. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, for the retro challenge, I was creating a VHDL version um, of the CPU chip, so to have the same functionality, but within the FPGA, along with the other functionality of the TI 994A. So now the FPGA chip is again booted up, uh, and it's outputting some random stuff here. So let me now initialize. Uh, the FPGA with another load that has the same TI-994A circuitry but it also now has the, the CPU core. So that's it. And now I'm then going to load the ROMs so that we can actually execute some code on this uh, VHDL CPU. And we have the same result. And you may be able to notice that this FPGA version of the CPU runs fa uh, far faster because the CPU is actually running at 100 megahertz. It's completely unoptimized still and there's a lot of wait states and stuff, but uh, this actually is the first piece of code that runs correctly on that CPU, so I'm pretty happy about that.